So, this is Awkward Hamster. This is my first time driving a Tesla Model S. Borrowing this car while my E3 from my buddy Asif over here. Hey guys. And we're on the way to Apple Store, of all places. <laughs> Someone forgot the, your Apple Watch charger. Yeah, I did. Wow, the braking. When, it's regenerative. Yeah. So when you let go of the accelerator, the car instantly slows down. It takes all the energy of you slowing down, puts it back into the battery, or as much as it can. So you see down there, there's mm -hmm. a, a green bar when you're regenerating energy uh, versus uh, orange when you're expending it. It's almost like down, downshifting. On well, there's shift. there's no gear, right? But when you downshift yeah. on, on a hill, it's suddenly more efficient. You use way less, uh, and it slows you down. Yeah, it does kind of. You can hurt your clutch doing that though. Mm. Whereas this is there's no no problem at all. So what do you think of that acceleration? <laughs> smooth, instant it's, torque. It's smooth, very smooth. Mm -hmm. But what is this thing that uh, I, I thought? That's your uh, cruise before. control. Uh, yeah, they moved it in later iterations. So one of the things that the Tesla has is an always-on rear camera. Mm -hmm. Which and is just fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why other cars don't have it. Because for my vehicle, I have it this hardwired, and I have it turned on only when I'm backing up. Whereas this one, I can always see what's behind me. So this was the first generation Model S. It does not have the, the sensor, the parking sensors for the front or the back. And currently, the Google Maps, the the display, it's like a mini iPad type of screen. Yeah, it's, screen? it's about 24 inches, I think, the screen. Nice quality display. It's currently, what, 8 o'clock p.m.? Mm -hmm. The display automatically adjusts. Uh, yeah. it, can, it, it can automatically adjust. I, I turned off that sensor. My, my car is one of the first 3,000 to ship, so it's got some issues. Uh, some of the... It doesn't have a lot of the features that are currently in the car, so it doesn't have the self-driving or the autopilot feature because uh, it doesn't have the sensors in the front thing. Right. And that's uh, so it had some it has some quirks to it, but I love it. Just about everything in, in here is leather. Mm -hmm. Even the dashboard is a double stitch. Yep. Yeah, that's the nice. That's really nice. Uh, but yeah, you know, and it, this was one of the configurations I chose the. It's an Obichi gloss, mm -hmm. uh, and also the uh, tan interior, and then the exterior is a green. It's it's a, a discontinued color. It's green. So was I supposed to turn here? Yeah, or? you were supposed to turn a while ago. That's oh, all good. Oh, I'll turn just, next one. Yeah, just enjoy the drive on La Brea. I think it's this is a good street to be doing it on. But yeah, it'll tell you. It'll tell you to turn again. We'll probably turn on Beverly Boulevard. I'm not used to have this this type of display. Yeah, I turn. I muted the uh, the map. No, so. I meant the the north. North up. Oh, you, I prefer, you prefer the, uh, this way. Yeah, I'll change. I'll change it for you. Thank you. You know, and uh, a little story. We, we were uh, we're here for E3, and uh, Michael was kind enough to hang out in my car while I was running into Kinko's to print some stuff. Uh, and uh, while he was in the car, he decided to add a profile for Awkward Hamster. And uh, so now, with the push of a button. Michael can change the seat configuration to what he is accustomed to. And then once I get back into the car, into the driver's seat, uh, I'll be able to push a button for myself, which how is many, great. How many driver profiles can... Uh, I don't know. I, it seems like probably four or five. or I don't know. Knowing Elon Musk, maybe like 99, because he's crazy. You know, he may be... It's hard to say. I, I would have to test that, but... This is the first time anyone's ever dared create a profile in my car. So, so both us and I were big Apple fans, and one thing we dislike about Apple is the Apple Maps. And yeah. what we do like about Tesla is that it's powered by Google, powered by Google, Google Maps. So the traffic yeah. is great, and also they take it a step further by using other Tesla drivers' navigation as like uh, waypoints. Yeah, Tesla monitors all of their drivers and uh, can give each other, they basically tr uh, transmit information to each other uh, in the interest of getting better real-time traffic data than even Google has. And it's great. Uh, I've avoided a lot of things. So it'll say navigation by Tesla powered by Google for the map. And I think that's a lesson that Apple could learn too, is that Google has the best mapping backend. Uh, why not use that and then just write your own front end code on top of it? But you know, we all know there's some between those two companies right now. Yeah. Oh, 
always not. There's no creep. Yeah. So it's basically not like the automatic car that's always in first gear once you put it in drive. Well, you can turn on creep. You can. Yeah, it's a feature. Huh. But I don't like it. I think this is a better way to experience <coughs> it. Yeah. Ever tell you how I learned driving? It was on a with, with a, a manual car. Mm -hmm. So it, it was. I didn't drive a automatic car until after I got my license. Oh wow! And the first time I got in an automatic car and set it to gear, it startled me. <laughs> because it started moving, moving yeah. by itself. You're like, wait a second. I was like, why is it? What's, what's, what's going on? You're like hammering the clutch, but it's not there. <laughs> a nice narrow street in Los Angeles. Got a lot of them. Have you noticed that the Tesla is a very wide vehicle? Like, I noticed that whenever we're parking, it just takes up both the left and the right, the right on the line. You're close, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a it's a boat. The, I I kind of feel like it's sort of like a seven series mm -hmm. in that sense, or some of those uh, higher end Mercedes that kind of feel like boats. But yeah, it's it's a big car. I mean, they uh, they built this platform. Uh, to maximize battery space, you know, the bottom of the car is the battery, so mm -hmm. uh, every inch counts when it comes to lithium ion. And I think. Uh, What's the maximum, the range? My car is an 85 kilowatt hour, it's a performance 85. Uh, it goes rated 265. Uh, you can, I've seen people squeeze 400 miles on the internet out of my car. So it's possible to go 400 miles, but it's difficult. You have to drive very slowly. You, don't, you can't use air conditioning. What about yourself? Um, most I've ever gotten out of it. I mean, I drive like a crazy person in this. Yeah. So I tend to get um, 240 off of it. And that's driving like... Uh, sometimes, like if I'm going to drive crazy all day, maybe I'll get less than 200 to it. But most of the time... I'd say 250. Tell me about the dashboard again. So besides putting the Google Maps on the left side, mm -hmm. what else can I put? Uh, you can put in your energy meter. You can put in uh, when you're playing music, it, it'll show you who's like what's playing. So is it just the left side that's, that's no, customizable? No, left, left and right are. And you click in on your steering wheel to control them. Then how come we how come you're leaving the right side blank? Um, because this car was recently serviced and I haven't had a chance to uh, do anything. And honestly, uh, the right side tends to be the one that's taken over by, like if you're doing uh, music. So mm -hmm. I frequently will plug my iPhone in via Bluetooth. Um, so it just does it for you. So I didn't, I didn't even think that, I didn't even think to do it. Uh, a lot of the time though, I do have uh, the energy uh, mm -hmm. consumption one there. I'll put the energy consumption chart and then uh, when I have a phone call, it kind of takes over. But yeah, it's cool. Can you navigate to the inner Yeah, it's right here. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, see, right now projected 154 miles range, mm -hmm. uh, but rated we're at 192 according to the dash. So that's based on average range. Instant range is a little bit better. Actually worse. And then it gives you a chart that's based on your five mile average, your 15 mile average and your 30 mile average. So it gives you different rated range based on those increments. So you see on a five mile range, a five mile average, which is really the time you've been driving, it's uh, 172. And that's on 192 rated. Uh, whereas when you go to 15, 153, or sorry, yeah, and then, yeah, the last 30, I was kind of driving before and I drive a little more aggressively. So I don't see a tech, like a tachometer. How do you explain the right side upper part where, where it goes from 60 to 320? 60 to 320 is kilowatt hours basically uh, per second or whatever. I guess mm -hmm. instant, uh, an instant measure of how many kilowatt hours are being used. Uh, so when you're flooring it, you can get it up to 300. And when you're slowing down real fast, you can, like, I live in Newport Coast, there's a lot of hills. So when you're going up and down hills, when you're going downhill real fast, you're regenerating it 60 kilowatt hours. Mm. So uh, it's interesting, like uh, driving home to my house, I live up in the hill, I expend more energy than going down the hill. But it ends up being a net zero effect, you know, because that energy is being put back into the battery, just being taken out of it. Let's switch it back to Google Maps again. Yeah, sure. 
Actually, I have a Google Maps right here. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, exactly. Elon, Elon's got your back. All right, there's ballet. Uh, I don't want to pay for ballet. I don't either. <laughs> who wants to go to a mall and pay for ballet? People in Beverly Hills. That's who. I did ballet back then when I was younger. And people loved paying for it. You feel right at home driving this. I know. This is my vehicle. I always, I always refer to it as that this vehicle belongs in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's been around. It's been in Texas and California so far. It was born in California. So one thing about a Tesla I'm not looking forward to is parallel parking with it because I can't see the, the front of the vehicle. The front of the vehicle is very low, in this model at least. Yeah. So if you were to sell this car right now, how much do you think you can get for it? Um, probably around $80,000. It's held its value very well uh, because it's now rare. I might even be able to get 90 or 100, but it's been an accident. Um, but why don't you sell it? Because I love it. But then you get the one that has autopilot, the... Uh... Yeah, you know what? It doesn't do enough, enough differently for me. And I'm not really, I'm not sold on autopilot. I like driving. I like, I like my hands on the wheel. I like feeling like I'm in control. That way, uh, yeah, you can try. I like feel like I'm in, I'm in control of the car. And uh, autopilot feels really weird. I, I demoed the, uh, the Model X. I'm taking a steering wheel. It reminds me of like back in the '80s when mm -hmm. a lot of folks get like those uh, steering wheel wrappers. Yeah. Rappers. Yeah. It is like that old school, like classic car steer, steering wheel. I feel like, like I'm feel giving like, away my age here. Yeah, well, we both are old. Oh, that's a spot. That's a spot right next to the person that just pulled on. So good to go. Nice. Oh, watch out. Yeah, we're good. So now I can't see the front of the vehicle. You're good. Now I know why you always park so much. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking up so, yeah. back so much. Cool. All right, stop this.